Get ready to level up your vocabulary because you are about to learn 200 important English expressions for daily life. Hi, I'm Vanessa from speakenglishwithvanessa.com and like always, I have created a free PDF worksheet for you with all 200 of today's expressions. This PDF is over 20 pages long and it is free for you, including all of the expressions, definitions, sample sentences, and at the bottom of the worksheet, you can answer Vanessa's challenge question so that you never forget what you've learned. You can click on the link in the description to download this free PDF worksheet today. All right, let's get started with our first category, which are 50 important nature expressions. Let's go outside to learn that lesson. All right, let's get started with our first category of nature expressions. The first category is big features of nature. The forest. The trees in the forest were so tall that I couldn't see the sky. Jungle. On our trip to Costa Rica, we went on some hikes in the jungle. Fjord. When our kids get older, I would love to take them on a trip to see the fjords of Norway. Canyon. I've never visited the Grand Canyon, but I've heard it's huge. River, stream, creek. We have a creek in our local park and my kids love to splash around in it. Lake. Over the summer, we like to go to the lake and paddleboard. Ocean. The ocean is so large that we haven't even explored all of it yet. Mountains. I love living in the mountains and going on vacation to visit other mountains too. The beach. When you go to the beach, make sure your pronunciation is clear for this. Beach. When you go to the beach, make sure you bring a towel and sunscreen. Desert. Something I want to experience is riding a camel across the desert. Have you ever done this? Our second category are words to describe beautiful nature. Breathtaking. The view from the top of the mountain was breathtaking. Refreshing. When I need to take a break from work, I go outside to get some fresh air because it's so ah, refreshing. Flourish. I love to see how some wildlife flourishes after a wildfire. Evergreen. I love to take a hike in an evergreen forest because it's great to see the greenness in the winter. Verdant. The valley looked so verdant in the spring. How refreshing after a cold, bleak winter. Crisp. After a hot summer, a crisp, dry fall is a refreshing thing. Wow, we're using the word refreshing a lot. <laughs> pristine. I love to go camping in the middle of the woods because it's so pristine. There's no litter. But unfortunately, there's a mountaintop near me that has recently been blocked for camping because so many people were camping there that the nature turned from being pristine to being full of litter and trash and it wasn't good for the environment. So this area is not pristine anymore, but hopefully it will be regenerated soon. Lush. The jungle in Costa Rica was so lush that you couldn't see much ahead of you because the leaves were so thick and lush. Majestic. The view of the ocean from the top of the mountains was majestic. Sweeping. From where I stand on the top of the mountain, I have a sweeping view of the valley. Our next category of nature words are words to describe problems with nature. Environmental issues. I'm concerned about environmental issues like climate change and pollution. Flood. In the spring, sometimes there's heavy rains that lead to flooding. Drought. The farmers lost almost all of their crops because there was a drought. It didn't rain for over two months. Pollution. To cut back on pollution, we try to walk or ride our bikes as much as possible. What about you? Do you have any ways that you try to reduce pollution? Endangered and extinct. Many animals are endangered and will become extinct if we don't do something to try to save them. Habitat loss. Tigers and elephants are two animals that are affected by habitat loss. Loss of biodiversity. 
Overfishing and pollution are two big factors when it comes to a loss of biodiversity in the oceans. Invasive. Feral hogs are invasive in the U.S. and cause a lot of destruction. Erosion. Cutting down trees can lead to erosion because the roots hold the soil in place. Wildfires. A recent wildfire in Canada was so large that we could see the smoke from where I live in the south of the U.S. Our next category are verbs to describe nature. To plant. My family loves planting trees and we try to plant at least one tree each year. To grow. Every year we try to take a picture with a tree in our yard so that we can see how the tree has grown and how our family has grown too. To rot. Mushrooms like to grow on logs that are rotting. To hibernate. Usually bears hibernate in the winter, but where I live, the bears don't completely hibernate. They wander around and try to dig in your trash, eat the berries on the bushes. They don't completely hibernate, so you have to watch out. To flower. Notice that this is a verb. This is a flower, but what does a flower do? It flowers. The tulips flower in the spring. To pollinate. Birds, bees, and other insects help to pollinate the flowers. To forage. Where I live, we have to be really careful with our trash because raccoons and bears like to forage in the trash. And it's not good for wildlife to do this. To regenerate. If you cut off a section of some plants, it can regenerate into a completely new plant. To babble. I like the sound of a babbling stream. Listen to this. Just a little note, the verb to babble is also the word that we use for babies before they learn to speak. So you might say, the baby is babbling when it says, I do that, do that, do that. It's not language, but they're trying to speak. <laughs> so maybe for you, if you're having a hard time speaking in English, you might say, oh, I feel like I'm just babbling. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But hopefully after this lesson, you won't need to babble about nature in English because you'll have the vocabulary you need. All right, let's go to the next expression. To blow in the breeze. We recently put up some wind chimes on our deck because they sound great blowing in the breeze. Our final category of nature words are words to describe small features in nature. Pedal. Notice that in American English, this T changes to a D sound. Pedal. Pedal. In the U.S., we have a wedding tradition where a small child called a flower girl scatters petals down the aisle before the bride walks down the aisle. A stem. Roses are beautiful, but watch out for the stem because they have thorns. The trunk. The trunk of the tree was so large that I couldn't wrap my arms around it. Bark. This is not talking about the sound that a dog makes. Woof, woof. Bark, bark. <laughs> this is talking about the side of a tree. You can usually tell the type of tree by its bark. Is it rough? Is it smooth? What's the texture of the bark? Branch. My kids love to climb trees and sometimes they make it to the tippy top of the branches. Leaves and needles. In the fall, leaves turn red, yellow, and orange, but usually needles stay green. Acorns, pine cones. We went out into the woods to collect some acorns and pine cones for an art project. Blades of grass. My son likes to look at bugs crawling through the blades of grass. Moss. I love walking on moss with bare feet because it's so soft and comforting. Boulders, rocks, stones, and pebbles. My kids love collecting rocks because they come in all sorts of fun shapes and colors. And it's amazing. They've come from the center of the earth and been around for a long time. They're pretty cool. Thanks for joining me outside. Let's go back inside and learn 50 important expressions for the classroom. Whether you are a teacher or a student, this lesson is for you. All right. 
Are you ready to start studying for the test? <laughs> Let's get started with our first category of classroom words, which are 10 items that you'll find in a classroom. The first one is, of course, a desk. Every student has their own desk in the classroom. Notice the grammar of this. I said every student, which is singular. And then I said, has their own desk. I used that plural there. You can say every student has his or her own desk, but in spoken English, we just use that plural word there. Every student has their own desk. This is very common in spoken English, so you can use it too. A chair. I was so embarrassed when I fell out of my chair in the middle of class. A notebook. I forgot my notebook. Can I borrow some paper for class? Just a little note that in the US, a notebook is always paper. I know in some countries they call a laptop a notebook, but in the US, especially in the classroom, we call that just a notebook with paper. A pen or pencil. I like using a pen, but usually teachers like you to use a pencil for tests. A chalkboard a blackboard, a whiteboard, or a smart board. The students were so excited when we upgraded from a whiteboard to a smart board. There were so many fun things that we could do with it. Just to let you know, a blackboard and a chalkboard are used interchangeably in the US. They're both things that are used with chalk, and you can use either word. A paper clip. I made sure to put a paper clip on my report because there were 10 pages. You can also use this as a verb. Make sure you paperclip your report together. A cubby or a locker. I forgot my notebook in my locker. Can I go get it? Usually the word cubby is used for elementary school children, so younger children, and a locker is used for older children. At least that's how it goes in the US. Tape. I tore my homework so I had to use some tape to tape it back together. Notice how I used this both as a noun, I need some tape, and as a verb, to tape it back together. Highlighters. I use colorful highlighters to help me remember what I'm studying. This is also a word that you can use as a noun or a verb. I'm using a highlighter or I like to highlight my notes. Scissors, I need to cut the paper. Can you pass me some scissors? Notice that the C is silent. Scissors, scissors. Our next 10 classroom expressions are expressions that the teacher will say. Hi, my name's Miss Vanessa and today we're going to be learning about math. Thankfully, I am not a math teacher. <laughs> if I walked into your classroom as your math teacher, you should probably be afraid. Math is not my strong suit. But here in the US, this is a common thing to say. Hi, I'm Miss Vanessa. It's becoming more and more popular to just use MS with a woman teacher because M-I-S-S -S means you're not married, Miss Vanessa, and Mrs. Vanessa means that you are married. But people are now kind of liking to not share if they're married or not. It makes sense. <laughs> so they want to just use the form Miss. It sounds the same as M-I-S-S, -S, but it's spelled M-S, Miss Vanessa. And some schools will use a last name as well they might say Miss Prothy or Miss Vanessa. I think it's becoming increasingly more popular to say Miss with a first name of the teacher, at least here in the US. We can't get started until everyone is in their own seat and quiet, laying down the law. <laughs> open your book to page 10 or open your workbooks to page 10. We're going to split up into groups for this project or we're going to split up into groups for this exercise. Sometimes the word exercise is used in the classroom, but it doesn't mean physical exercise. It's just a project or an activity. Keep your eyes on your own test or no discussing answers. This is something a teacher might say to prevent cheating or to remind you, keep your eyes on your own test. Don't look at other people's tests as you're taking it and every student's favorite thing that a teacher says, today we're going to have a pop quiz. So I hope you did your homework. Ugh. 
<laughs> Nothing strikes fear into a student's heart more than the phrase pop quiz. The word pop means surprise quiz. Today we're going to have a pop quiz. Oh, <laughs> a terrible feeling. You will have 15 minutes to finish this quiz, no talking, and turn your paper face down when you're finished. This phrasal verb, face down, means simply turn your paper over. That way no one is tempted to look at your answers. Turn your paper face down when you're finished. Here in the US, teachers like students to come up with their own answers and not just memorize something from the book. At least that's the ideal situation. So when a teacher asks a question and a student just reads the answer from the book, the teacher might say, wait, tell me in your own words. In your own words means just create your own answer. Don't read it directly from the book. Tell me in your own words. And this is also a great idea for learning English as well. If someone asks you, What's your favorite movie? Well, you could read the back of the movie or read a description online, but it's better practice to just tell them in your own words, to create those sentences yourself and test your skills. All right, time's up. Pencils down. <laughs> this is what a teacher will say at the end of a test or a quiz. Time's up, that means time is finished. And pencils down, you're all done with the test, I hope. And at the end of the day, the teacher will say, that's all for today. Don't forget to do your homework tonight. Bye. Our next category of important phrases for the classroom are 10 phrases that a student might say. Miss Vanessa, I don't have my pencil. <laughs> Teachers hear this all the time. Or Miss Vanessa, I don't have my book. Miss Vanessa, I don't have my homework. Well, how the teacher responds is always up to that teacher. For me, when I was a classroom teacher, I always kept a jar of pencils that any student could use. Ideally, they would return them at the end of the class period. That didn't always happen, but it's common for students to forget things during the day in the class. Miss Vanessa, my dog ate my homework. <laughs> This is the most stereotypical excuse for forgetting your homework. Maybe your dog really did eat your homework, but this is something that you will absolutely hear in movies and TV shows. And if you're in the classroom, you might even hear a student so bold enough to say this excuse. Miss Vanessa, my dog ate my homework. <laughs> Miss Vanessa, I don't understand. Or Miss Vanessa, I don't get it. This phrase, I don't get it, is a little more informal and potentially rude if you say, Miss Vanessa, I don't get it, with this kind of attitude, like, I don't really care, oh, I'm annoyed. But if you say this in a polite way, Miss Vanessa, I don't get it, can you explain it again? That's perfectly fine. You can tell the difference in my attitude. I need to cram for this test if I'm gonna get a good grade. The verb to cram is used a lot by students and it means to study a lot, usually the night before, maybe a day in advance, possibly, but it means you need to push all of that information into your brain. You need to cram the information into your brain. You can also use this verb in a physical way. If you're packing for a big trip and you have too many clothes to fit in your suitcase, you might say, I need to cram all of my clothes into this small suitcase. That's the physical way we can use this verb. Unfortunately, I said this next one in college a lot. I haven't studied for the test tomorrow, so I'm gonna pull an all-nighter. Can you guess what this means? To pull an all-nighter means to stay up all night studying. It's really never a good idea, but it happens. You might ask your classmates, hey, can I borrow your notes? I was sick yesterday. And if your classmate is nice, they might let you borrow their notes. Psst, you know Sam? He's a real teacher's pet. Miss Vanessa is always picking him to write on the whiteboard. This phrase, a teacher's pet, seems like a nice thing. It's the teacher's favorite student. But in reality, it's usually a term that other students use to make fun of someone. Ugh, you're such a teacher's pet. Usually it's not a good thing, but in reality, what's so wrong with being one that a teacher likes? Well, students just don't like it. <laughs> Miss Vanessa, are there extra credit points? Miss Vanessa, are there bonus points? If you're not doing so well in a class, you might ask that question. Miss Vanessa, I'm totally lost. <laughs> <laughs> if you are so confused, you have no idea what's going on, it's a great phrase to use. 
And our final phrase that students say in the classroom is one that unfortunately I used with many of my poor teachers. Teacher, when are we going to use this? <laughs> If you've ever sat in a math trigonometry class, just cramming information into your brain and feeling so overwhelmed and frustrated because you just didn't get it, that was me. <laughs> you might ask your teacher this, oh, excuse me, when am I going to ever use this? And the idea is, when am I going to use this after school, in the real world, in my job? A lot of people don't use trigonometry in their job. Some people do, but a lot of people don't. So students often feel frustrated if they can't see a link between what they're learning in the classroom and what they're going to be using in the real world. So that's something that I try to do here on my YouTube channel. A lot of you learned English phrases in the classroom that just weren't relevant, that were just not really used in real life. So here on my YouTube channel, I'm trying to teach you what people really use in the real world because that is what you're going to use when you speak with people at your job, when you travel, or just friends that you make around your city. The next 10 classroom expressions are questions that a teacher might ask, and then we'll talk about some questions that a student might ask. A teacher might ask, can anyone tell me or who can tell me? And she's asking the classroom to give her some feedback and answer the question to see if they have that knowledge. Can anyone tell me what is the best way to learn English? Hmm. Any questions? This is a great question by a teacher because it's important that they give students the time to ask questions as well. When students are all taking turns doing something, the teacher might forget who has had a turn and who hasn't had a turn. So the teacher will ask this question, who hasn't gone yet? Who hasn't gone yet? I know we're using the word go here, who hasn't gone, we're using that in the past, but really the question is who hasn't had a turn yet? But the most common way to say it is this, who hasn't gone yet? The next question a teacher or a student might ask this, whose turn is it? If you forget whose turn it is, <laughs> you could ask this, whose turn is it? Let's go on to some questions that students specifically ask. Miss Vanessa, what page are we on? <laughs> Sometimes this makes a teacher roll their eyes. Ugh, weren't you paying attention? But it's a common question. Miss Vanessa, can you repeat the question? Miss Vanessa, when is the test? And possibly the most common question of all time, Miss Vanessa, will this be on the test? Nothing makes a teacher more angry <laughs> because of course the teacher wants the students to enjoy learning all the information and to readily soak it in. But really what the students want to know is, do I need to learn this? Do I need to memorize this? Or is this just something extra? Will this be on the test? <laughs> when there's a group project, one student might ask another student this question. Do you want to work together? Do you wanna to work together? As we know, students are always forgetting something, so it's best to ask your classmates before you ask your teacher. You might ask your classmates, can I borrow a pencil? Can I borrow a book? Can I borrow some paper, please? And our final 10 phrases that are used in the classroom are phrases that are used for feedback. So a teacher will say this to students to give them some feedback, positive or negative feedback, or to give some encouragement to students. On a math test, you might see the teacher write or say this, show your work. What does this mean? <laughs> this means that you can't just write the answer. You need to show how you got to that answer. You need to write out all of the processes that you used to get to that answer. Show your work. This also helps the teacher know that you're not cheating. You're not just looking at Vanessa's paper. Don't look at my paper. It probably has the wrong math answer. <laughs> but when you show your work, it tells the teacher that you know how to do that problem. A similar phrase that you might see on a test or you might hear the teacher say is explain your answer. This works for math, but this also works for other subjects as well. If you get something wrong and the teacher doesn't want to just say, no, that's wrong, <laughs> the teacher will probably say, almost, try again. This is a really polite thing to say. I often say this to my kids actually, because you know, sometimes they're close or it's not exactly correct, but it's not a serious thing. So I'm not gonna say, no, that's wrong. Instead, you can just say, almost, try again. A similar expression is, you're on the right track. A teacher will say this to a student who 
isn't exactly giving the perfect answer, but it's close to the correct answer and they want to encourage the student to keep exploring that idea further. You're on the right track, keep going. A kind teacher might also say, keep practicing, you almost got it. You almost got it. If you take out the word almost, it means you have the correct answer, you got it. But oftentimes students don't have the correct answer the first time, so a teacher might say this, keep practicing, keep trying, you almost got it, you're so close. So to take that expression and use it in the positive way, a teacher might say, you got it, keep going, you got it, you are doing great, you have the correct answer, keep working. If the teacher wants to give a little hint or some feedback about a future test to students, the teacher might say, here are some things that you'll want to focus on before the next test. They might even say, wink, wink, or nudge, nudge, or just to let you know, here are some things that you might want to focus on before the next test. They're not saying these things will be on the test. They're kind of in a, using a more indirect expression. These are the things that you might want to focus on. The next question could be used by students or teachers. It's what about, here we're using it to suggest something. So a student might use this in response to a teacher. Let's say that teacher, Miss Vanessa, <laughs> asked the class, class, do you know why there are waves in the ocean? This was actually a question that my kids were talking about in the car a couple days ago. <laughs> it's very familiar to me right now. The teacher asked, why are there waves in the ocean? Well, the students might not be extremely certain of their answers, so they could use this great question. Uh, what about wind? What about the moon? What about, here they're suggesting an answer, even though they don't know the exact correct answer, they don't feel certain of it, they can use this question. And a teacher can also use this question by giving suggestions to students. So let's say students uh, are answering the question, why are there waves in the ocean? And they throw out some ideas and the teacher wants to also throw out some ideas to see what the students think about it. They might say, what about whales? What about sharks? Maybe they're making the waves <laughs> due to their big size, I'm not sure. <laughs> but here, this is the teacher giving suggestions or the students giving suggestions. Do you know what the correct answer is? Why are there waves? Well, the answer is wind. Very cool, you should look it up. There's some very interesting videos about why there are waves. <laughs> The next phrase a teacher might say to give encouragement to a student is, I can tell you've been working hard on this. I can tell you've been working hard on this. This doesn't mean it's perfect, or this is the best in the entire class. It just means for you, I know that you put a lot of effort into this and that's what I want. I want you to put a lot of effort into it because that's the only way you're going to improve. I can tell you put a lot of hard work into this or I can tell you've been working hard on this. And our final phrase that you will hear in the classroom is one that we all want to hear, you passed with flying colors. This is a beautiful idiom that means you got a 100%. You had perfect answers for every single one. You passed with flying colors, congratulations. Next, let's go on to 50 important questions and answers for daily life. This is an essential part of conversation, so listen carefully. All right, our first category are greetings. Hmm. How's your day going? Pretty good, how about yours? You been doing okay? Uh, it's been kind of a hard week, but it's getting better. How you been? I've been good, I haven't seen you for so long. How have you been? What's new with you? Oh, we just had our third baby. My family's so excited. What's new in your world? Well, we have a newborn, so everything's new, but we're getting adjusted to our new routine. What's been going on? Well, our boys are excited about going back to school. I'm excited about growing the business. It's just been a busy time, but so far so good. How's it going? Uh, it's going. It's been a hard week. I hope that I'll get to relax this weekend. Just a little note, if you're having a hard week, you can just respond to this question by saying, it's going. It's going. <laughs> it's going. What's up? Not a lot, just enjoying these last days of fall before winter gets here. What about you? How's everything? Or, how's everything going? 
pretty good. We've had a busy summer, but I think we're all ready to get started with the school year and just see what this year holds. Hey, you doing all right? Yeah, I'm okay. I just need to take a nap and eat something. Just a little note, this question is a great one to ask when you think someone's not looking so well. Maybe they're feeling a little sick, a little tired. You can ask this question just to kind of check up on them. Yeah, especially if you're like a friend. Yes. Wouldn't necessarily say like a coworker you don't know that well. Yeah, but this is good for someone you care right? about. Yeah. <laughs> all right, our next category are 10 questions to ask about plans. What are you up to today? Or what you up to today? Well, I kind of have a busy day. I need to do some work in the morning, do some housework in the afternoon, and then finish all of this before I pick up my kids from school. Do you want to hang out later? Yeah, if I can get all of my work finished by this afternoon, I'd love to. You doing anything fun this weekend? Yeah, we're going to get together with some family that's coming to visit from out of town. You got anything fun planned? Yeah, this weekend we're going to have a big surprise birthday for my best friend. Want to grab lunch later? Actually, I was about to make a big salad with vegetables from the garden. Want to join me? Where are you headed? I was going to go drop some books off at the library and then head to the farmer's market. Want to join me? What you got going on this weekend? Well, we're going to go on a big family hike because it's supposed to be great weather all weekend. What are your plans for dinner? Uh, I don't really have any. Do you? Are you going to be around later? Yeah, give me a call around two o'clock and I can talk. Just a little note, this is a great question to ask when you don't have time to have a conversation now, but you really want to tell someone something, so you're just asking about their availability for later. Have you decided where you're going on vacation? Yeah, I think we're going to take a big road trip to visit some friends and then we'll go to the lake together. All right, let's go to our next category, which are the top 10 questions to talk about your interests or hobbies. What do you like to do in your free time? Well, I like to make jewelry out of recycled things and sell them at craft shows. How long have you done that? I just started in the last few years. What got you into that? Well, I like being creative and I like trying to reduce waste where I can. You want to try? Well, I don't have much time right now, but maybe tomorrow. What are you into? Well, I love being outdoors and in nature, so I'm into hiking, gardening, really anything that involves being outside. What's that like? Well, to go hiking, especially in the rain or inclement weather, you have to be pretty tough, but it feels fun and you feel courageous. I think it's personally pretty exciting. How'd you learn that? Well, I learned a lot about gardening online by watching YouTube videos, but it's also through trial and error. Have you seen the latest Batman movie? I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's pretty good. Have you read the book Atomic Habits? No, I haven't. Have you? I think I want to learn piano. Can you teach me? Sure. I love teaching people. All right, let's go to our next category, which are the top 10 questions that you'll ask around the house. Can you help me with something? Sure. Give me a second and I'll be right there. Have you seen my jacket? Yeah, I think it's on the chair. Did you check the closet? Yeah, I did check the closet, but I didn't see my shoes in there. Can you pass me the salt and pepper? Sure, here you go. Did you check the mail today? I did. Our package didn't come yet. Have you fed the cats yet? Actually, I watched while the boys did it. They did a great job. Is it time for dinner? Well, it's a little early for dinner, but I'm hungry. Let's eat. Would you rather fold laundry or put away the dishes? Because both have to be done. Well, I'd rather fold the laundry if you put away the dishes. Do I have to? I know. I don't like doing chores either, but they have to be done. This is a really common question that children will often ask in this whining tone. Do I have to? When they don't want to do a chore, but they know it's required. Will you hit the light? Yeah, in just a sec. I want to finish reading this page. This is a great question that you can ask for turning on or turning off the light. Will you hit the light? All right, here's our final category with the top 10 questions and answers to use about your job or work. How's the project going? It's going pretty well. I like working with my team and I think we're gonna finish by the deadline. Are you working on anything fun? Well, there's nothing too exciting right now, but we're about to start a big new project next week. What do you do? Or, what are you studying? 
I'm a teacher. Or I'm studying to become a teacher. What's your dream job? Well, I don't really have a dream job, but a lot of things that I like involve working with people. So maybe my dream job is working with people in some way. I'm looking for a job. Is your company hiring? You know, I'm not sure, but I'll ask around. What kind of work experience do you have? Well, I really love working with technology and computers, so that's what I've been doing for the last five years. What's your favorite part about your job? Well, I really like working with people, so it really makes me happy when I see them grow and develop and progress. What's your least favorite part of your job? Well, sometimes I don't really like the business parts of running a business. Taxes, payroll, spreadsheets, all that stuff. Blech. Would you rather do manual labor or have a desk job? Well, manual labor can be really tough, especially in inclement weather. So I guess I would rather have a desk job as long as I got to have long stretches of time where I could go outside and get fresh air. How long have you worked in education? Well, technically I've worked in education for the last 15 years, but I've been doing this job teaching online for the last 10 years. I can't believe it. Great work learning those questions and answers. Let's move on to a fun final 50 expressions, 50 phrasal verbs with one mug. What is this? Well, let's watch to find out. All right, are you ready to learn 50 phrasal verbs with this simple mug? Let's do it. I pick up the mug to take a drink. When I'm done, I put down the mug on the coaster. I fill up the mug with hot tea. I set down the mug on the table. Oh, be careful, don't knock over the mug. It's almost time to break out my holiday mugs, Santa and Christmas presents. I haven't used this mug for a while, so I need to brush off the dust. Ugh, what's in here? I need to wipe out the mug with a towel. Unfortunately, this mug is dirtier than I thought, so I need to really clean it out before I use it. I'm cleaning off the outside of this mug with a towel. When I'm done, I'll wipe it off and it will be as good as new. I pour in some hot tea. I stir in some milk. I mix in some milk. I stir up my tea. I drizzle in some honey to my tea. I sprinkle some sugar into my tea. I wipe up the ring on the table that was left by my mug. The mug heats up my hands on a cold winter day. I put the mug on the coaster to let it cool down before I drink it. I blow on my tea to help it cool off before I drink it. I don't want to burn my tongue. Mm. Ugh, I messed up my tea and I added salt instead of sugar. Gross. I hand over Dan's favorite mug so that he can use it for coffee. Here you go. I hang on to the handle of the mug. I tell my kids to hold on with two hands so that they don't drop the mug. I can't believe you want to give away my favorite mug. The color on the back of this mug is starting to wear off after years of use. It's looking a little more pink than red. Oh, I have to keep the mug away from the edge of the table so that it doesn't fall off. I lift up the mug gently to take a sip. Try not to slam down your mug or it's gonna make a big mess. When we moved, I wrapped up each of my mugs so that they didn't break. One time when I was talking, my mug oh, tipped over and spilled tea all over the table. I add in a new mug to my collection. I clean up the mug collection so that it's nice and neat. I have so many mugs that I need to stack them up. Where is it? Aha, I'm going to pick out this mug today. 
I pour out the cold tea that I forgot about yesterday. Something hard is stuck at the bottom of my mug, so I need to scrape it out. We've run out of clean mugs, so I need to wash this one. If we don't wash the mugs after we use them, they just pile up on the counter. I rinse off the soap from inside my mug. And I rinse out my mug. I turn over the mug to let it dry. And before I put it away, I dry it off. I put my mug away in the cabinet after I wash it. Uh-oh, I accidentally knocked the mug off the counter. Oh no, the handle broke off my mug. <laughs> I guess the only thing I can do is sweep up the pieces. Now all I can do is dump out the pieces in the trash. <sighs> and now after all that hard work, I'm going to curl up on the couch with a nice hot cup of tea. Congratulations on learning these 200 important daily life English expressions. Don't forget to download the free PDF worksheet, which includes all 200 of these expressions, definitions, sample sentences, Vanessa's challenge question at the bottom of the worksheet. This is all free for you to download over 20 pages of free English worksheet for you. You can click on the link in the description to download that free PDF worksheet today. And thank you so much for learning English with me. I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. But wait, do you want more? I recommend watching this video next. Yes, 200 more English expressions in only 30 minutes. How is it possible? <laughs> you will learn important expressions like how to talk about eating breakfast extremely quickly. What is a common expression for this? Well, you'll have to watch that video to find out and I'll see you there.